Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to review X-Men Origins Wolverine. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, we concluded the original X-Men trilogy. The first one was great. The second one was even better. But I would say that it's equally great as the first one. But I will say the second one is a bit better. Then we reviewed the third one, and it was terrible. It was pretty terrible. Pretty disappointing, because the last two, well, the first two movies were great. And the third one came out. It was a disappointing follow-up. And now Fox decided to do a prequel for Wolverine and for other X-Men characters in the future. Like, they plan to do a Magneto prequel that never got made because how the monstrosity this one was. And I will say that it's not a good movie. This is not a good Marvel, not Marvel movie. This is not a good X-Men movie. And the thing is that I will say that it's not as bad as Last Stand. I will say the Last Stand is a bit worse, and especially with a lot of the shit that this movie has gone through and a lot of the stupid decisions it did, um, Baraka Pool. But um, I will say that at least with this one, it knew what story it wanted to do because with Last Stand, it tried to do too many stories, like a cure for mutation, some of the Dark Phoenix, kill off majority of the X Men. Like, it wanted to do so many stuff that it didn't know what to do. Like, they had to rush it out because, you know, Brian Singer left to do Superman Returns. And, you know, they made a new X-Men movie every three years because the first one came out in 2000, the sex sequel 2003, and the third one 2006, and this one 2009. So they had to, like, make a new X-Men movie almost every three years. So they had, like, a schedule where they had to do that. So I'm guessing they had to rush the third one out, and that's why it became the way it did. But just like Superman for the Quest for Peace, it's not as bad as the third one. Superman for the Quest for Peace is still a horrible movie, but I will say it's much better than Superman 3. Superman 3 is just so boring. X-Men The Last Stand is bad, but I will say that X-Men Origins Wolverine is not as bad, but it's still a bad movie. And it shows a lot. So, I don't know where to start, but let's just begin to the topic, really. Our film begins decades ago, in the year 1845, yes, way far back, where Wolverine, a.k.a. James Howard, that's his real name, is a little kid and discovers his mutant powers for the first time once his stepfather gets killed by his drunken real father that he accidentally stabs because he thought he was a house burglar. Yet we actually heard the stepfather say to Victor Sabretooth that your father's drunk again. So pretty much the stepfather was trying to be a real father and felt more like a father figure than his actual father. And this also establishes that in this universe, Wolverine and Sabretooth are brothers. And this is the first retcon problem for the X-Men franchise. Like, the first two movies, they did a great job, like, with the continuity. The third one, still bad, but they kind of followed it, but they still did a bad job. But... This is the where that movie, X-Men movies start to get really confusing with timeline stuff. Like, so, in the first X-Men movie, we see Sabretooth and Wolverine fight each other. It makes sense that Wolverine has no memory of Sabretooth being his brother. Because, you know, Wolverine ha has characters that he lost his memory and he can't get it back. He has to, like, get it back for, like, later in the stories. That makes sense. But for Sabretooth... We, he never mentions to Wolverine that, like, his brother, and Wolverine's like, what are you talking about? Like, we never see that in the first movie. So that shows you that this was just something random, so it's a retcon. This is the problem with the X-Men movie timeline, is that they retcon a lot of stuff. And I mean a lot of stuff. So this is our first biggest problem. So they have to probably say, like, oh, Sarah Tooth lost his memory as well. Like, so, like, they have no memory of being brothers, so that just makes it all pointless. Like, there's no point in that. I mean, yeah, the, them being brothers is an interesting idea, but it's like, it, it goes nowhere in, like, the first movie because it was never planned back then. So, pretty much, the whole them being brothers is a pointless thing. And Sabretooth in this movie, it's kind of just a waste of time other than, like, oh, let's just bring him in the movie because, you know, let's have the idea of them being brothers and we'll never bring up Sabretooth ever again because he died in the in-between in comic of the second film. So after Jimmy and Victor, I'm going to call them by those names because Wolverine's real name is James Hallett and Sabretooth's name is Victor, at least in the movies. I don't know about the comics. Like, Sabretooth to me felt more, in the comics and other incarnations, felt more like, you know, he was unknown like Wolverine. Like, he had similar past Wolverine. So, like, you know, but here they give him a name and stuff, so I'm not sure. Maybe. Let me know in the comments below. So, pretty much, for the opening credits, we learn about pretty much what they've been doing their whole life after they ran away from home. And they've been fighting at the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, and all kinds of wars. 
And that would seem like an interesting movie prequel for Wolverine to have him fight in all kinds of wars, especially World War II, where he would run in Captain America. But that probably will never happen unless the MCU decides to do that. Like, the only way that could work is if the MCU decided to do a Wolverine film of him fighting World War II and have Captain America make a cameo appearance in, like, a certain part of during the first Avenger, maybe when it was off screen, or have it take place after that and maybe run into Agent Carter or something. But who knows? That would be interesting, but yeah. And especially since this came out a year after Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk, and that's where the MCU started to begin. And there was no MCU film in 2009 except for this Marvel movie, which was an X-Men film and not an MCU film. The MCU films continued after Disney bought Marvel, which was the same year this film came out. So, yeah. And pretty much after we get the credits opening, which was really good. I say the opening credits thing is probably the best thing about the movie because of the cinema... cinema, cinema uh, I can't even pronounce cinematography right today. Pronounce it. Like, cinematography. Like, that. I like that. It's really good. So, once they get pretty much get shot, supposedly, you know, they're like saying, like, oh, it just tickled. They meet Colonel Stryker, William Stryker. And he recruits him on this team he's been having of mutants. Um, one about the bl- one involves the blob before he was fat and stuff. So he's pretty much as big, like he's pretty much colossal except without the metal. So and they got this one guy who teleports, who pretty much hints like you know he has a n- similar power like Nightcrawler because in the X Men Origins Wolverine video game, actually yeah I forgot his name is John. It's John for John him him Mystique worth thing in the game and that kind of like had Nightcrawler. So, but that got retconned in first class. So the game's sadly not canon, which is a much better story for this, you know, movie. The story for X-Men Origins Wolverine is much better in the video game than it is the movie. Just skip the movie, go watch the video game. That's all I gotta say. So pretty much, we're introduced to Wade Wilson as well and a bunch of other characters who I don't remember. They're just like... Low tier. Of course, we get Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Well, he's not called Deadpool in this movie. They mention his name Deadpool, but that's out there. He becomes Baraka Pool. So pretty much, his whole character is that Deadpool that never shuts up and never stops talking. Like the team is like, "Oh my God, do you ever shut up?" So we see like Wade's skills with the sword stuff, with the bullets dodging the bullets, and then after everything's done, he's like, "Okay, people are dead," and I'm just like, huh. And I'm like, you know, he's not like the Deadpool we know in the later Deadpool movies. It's like Ryan Reynolds. When Ryan Reynolds is a serious actor, he I don't think Ryan Reynolds is that great when he's a serious actor. Like, I think Ryan Reynolds even knows that himself. Like, Ryan Reynolds is like, you know what, I think I'll just stick to parody movies. Like, because Ryan Reynolds is good at being Deadpool and, and just being in parody movies. Like, funny movies, not like serious movies. Because, like, I don't think Ryan Reynolds could do a good job when he's, like, serious. Like, you can tell Ryan Reynolds is more of, like, that comedian actor. Like, you know, I can see Ryan Reynolds doing that. So after, like, so pretty much Colonel Stryker wants this rock thing that's revealed to be animantium inside of it. And they go to the place where they found it, and they're about to assassinate everyone there. And Wolverine, well, James Hallett, is, like, telling his brother Victor, like, no. And then, like, he leaves the team after, and then we cut to six years later in 1971. Six years later, we cut to Wolverine now living on top of the mountain with his new girlfriend, not Jean Grey, because she would have been a little girl by the, now. Well, by then, and she he has a love interest is Kayla, and you already know she's something's gonna happen to her. Like you know she's gonna die because this is the prequel. That's the problem with prequels. It's like when they have a love interest, like in a French in a movie franchise when they do a prequel or franchise in general when they have a love interest, and in the prequel they have a different love interest. You know that love interest is gonna die or something because like you know they have a different love interest in the later films or in the films that take that were that were made before but supposed to take place after in the timeline like you know that's the problem with prequels here everybody that's the problem with prequels so Sabretooth kills the remaining crew because the first one he kills is wade wilson off screen and colonel striker orders him we don't find out, out about this until you know Sabretooth kidnaps cyclops young cyclops which we'll talk about later so like it's obvious. It's not a surprise that the first person of the old crew that Colonel Strucker once had, the first person that he was told to kill is Wade Wilson because he talks too much. Like that, it, I wouldn't be surprised. Then he kills the guy with the light powers. Like you know, he can control lights. Say like one scene where he's like he was stuck. The whole crew was stuck in an elevator. Movie was a part of the team, and like you know, it was powered down. And the guy like you know uses light powers to like you know bring the electricity back on for him to go up to the. Top is part of the building. So, yeah, he pretty much is a now a circus freak, and you know, he like has he like he has this little game like, oh, turn off the light bulb. And so they try to turn off, so the people try to turn off the light bulb, and you know, it's not gonna work because like you know, he has that power. 
And he pretty much just lives in a trailer park on his own. And I'm just making a joke to be like, oh, he can just turn off electricity whenever he wants. He doesn't have to pay bills. And that'd be cool. If I wish I kind of wish I had his power so I wouldn't have to pay bills when I'm older. <laughs> so Sabretooth comes in and he, the guy's pretty scared of Sabretooth. And Sabretooth kills him, of course. So then, you know, Striker comes to Wolverine about this. And Wolverine's not interested. He's like, not interested in stuff. So he's going to like just watch out for himself. And later in the day, we see um, Wolverine's girlfriend, Kayla, um, about to get killed by Sabretooth. And Wolverine finds her too late. He, she's covered in blood. And then Wolverine screams in pain. No, not, in, not in pain, but in tears because his girlfriend's dead. And then he goes to find Sabretooth. Wolverine then finds Sabretooth's location. And it's at a bar. And Wolverine has his bone metal claws. Yes, he had bone metal claws, not metal claws. He didn't get those yet. And he fights Sabretooth. And the fight scene is alright. It was way cooler in the video game. It was perfect in the video game. Because at the video game, and boss fights have to look badass. So the video game had a better boss fight. And Sabretooth and Wolverine fighting was much better in the first X-Men movie. Because they were fighting on top of the Statue of Liberty. And it just looked more iconic and more memorable. This fight scene, I mean, it had a cool thing where Sabretooth was coming at Wolverine like he was an actual Sabretooth. Like, that was cool and all. But, like, eh. It was kind of lame, the fight scene. Like... Pretty much after Sabretooth kicks Wolverine's ass, he breaks one of his claws. But in the video game, he breaks both of them. And then he kills Wolverine's girlfriend. But in the movie, he kills her before. I think the choice of killing her after Sabretooth kicked his ass, well, supposedly killing her, was a better choice. The video game did better decisions with the, with the movie anyway. The video game was much better. Just skip this movie and play the video game. And Wolverine gets straight to the hospital, and the, and the doctors are like, he's fine. Then Wolverine freaks out, he's like, where's Sabretooth? And then Colonel Stryker comes in, and he's like, I can give you adamantium weapons. You will suffer more pain than any man can endure. Pretty much the line he did in the video game. Like, it was just, any delivered line this ga- in this movie was delivered so much better than the game, because the game did a much better job with the story, and made it more interesting. And it's disappointing that this is what, in this, that the game was based off of this movie. So Wolverine goes in the tub, like the flashbacks he would have in the first two X-Men movies. And it seemed interesting in the flashbacks. But here, we kind of see it now, and it's like, eh, it's not as good as it was in the flashbacks of X2. Like, did a really good job how it was portrayed. And I think they should have gotten Brian Singer to direct this movie, because I think he would have made it much cooler. Especially since Wolverine had blood all over him in a flashback. So it's like, you know, that would have been cooler if this was an R-rated X-Men movie. Or no, Wolverine movie. But we won't get that until Logan, which is probably the only good solo Wolverine movie. There's The Wolverine, which I probably say it's all right but we're about to rewatch it so who knows i might find it good we don't know but yeah wolverine escapes gets his metal claws and the cgi is pretty bad everyone has said it it's pretty bad and the claws in the first x-men movie actually the first three x-men movies had better claws design than this one and this one was cgi and those were like practical effects i think actually no i think some parts it was cgi but it looked much better in those movies than it did in this one like this one just looks really fake and Wolverine is, like, pretty much on the loose, bare-ass naked, and he goes to a barn, and these old, this old couple find him, and they welcome him and greet him, because, you know, he's just lost and had a rough night. And he pretty much just stays for the night and stuff, and they give him his, their, him their son's clothes. And pretty much they get assassinated by the guy who shoot bullets really good, and Wolverine's like, you shouldn't have done that. And he rides the bike that he was given, and he jumps... Pretty much it explodes, and then he jumps to the helicopter, cutting off the, um, you know, the thing that makes the helicopter fly, and then it explodes, killing the guy in it, and gives it, like, a cool guys don't look at an explosion. Shows you how badass Wolverine was, which was a cool shot, but when it gets close to the explosion, like, it, it kind of looks like it's CG, uh, not CG, but a green screen background. I mean, it's better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation's background. So, let's talk about young Cyclops for a second. So, Cyclops is not in the film that much. In fact, I don't even know why he's there. This is a movie about Wolverine and his origin story. Like, what's the point of having Cyclops in this? Like, they after, like, the barn scene happened, they legitimately cut to a school that Cyclops is in. And they're, like, telling him to take off the glasses, but he can't. Because, you know, if he doesn't, if he takes off those glasses, then chaos is going to happen all around the school. So, he gets to tension. That's the right, pretty much, he has to, he's pretty much Bart Simpson writing a bunch of stuff on the chalkboard. And Sarah Joe finds him and knocks him out. And to be that Colonel Stryker's been kidnapping mutants to make Baraka pool. Well, Everyone calls him Baraka Pool, but it's actually Weapon 11. So we'll just call him Weapon 11 from now on. Or Baraka Pool. I'd say whenever I want. But you could just have unnamed mutants. Because you had a bunch of unnamed mutants in the last movie. 
And I don't get what's the point of having Cyclops in this movie other than to give Weapon 11 eye laser powers. But, like, he, I, you know, I don't think he really needs that. Like, like I think the main reason Cyclops is in this movie was because how dirty he, he was done in the last movie. Like, in X-Men Last Stand, he had little screen time. He was in the film for, like, maybe two or, heck, even a minute. Like, he was just there to die. They just randomly kill him off. And he's never brought up again. Well, no, he is brought up, but they don't mourn his death as much as they do for Charles Xavier and Jean Grey. So I'm guessing the people were like, oh my god, we did Cyclops so dirty. Let's bring him in this movie just to do a better job. So pretty much Cyclops is there just to be recruited by Charles Xavier for like the X-Men. For like, who knows, maybe a Cyclops prequel, the another X-Men prequel that probably never happened. Because we got a much better X-Men prequel called First Class. Alright, another fight scene that was done much better in the video game. Wolverine versus the Blob, or Duke, because he's called Deuce? No, no, Deuce. Yeah, Duke in this movie. And he hates being called Blob. So there's also John, the guy who could teleport. He helps Wolverine after he kicks Blob's ass. Logan, not John. So Wolverine managed to find their location at some boxing place. I don't get how Wolverine knew the location, but whatever. We'll just go with it. And pretty much he asks for Blob's help to find out where Victor is. And he's not doing anything. And pretty much after Wolverine said Bub and Blob thought he said Blob in mistake... And then he's about to fight Logan, and pretty much Wolverine kicks his ass, obviously. And Wolverine interrogates him, and he says that, like, Striker's taking all these mutants to an island and creating something. And there's one that escaped, and he calls himself Gambit. So Wolverine and John go find Gambit, and they just leave Blob there, probably to just crap himself, because Wolverine had the claws. Wolverine and John then find Gambit, and John's gonna be like, alright, I'll check the back of the place to, like, make sure nothing's gonna happen. And Wolverine's like, wait, I gotta fight him or something? And he's like, no, just, you know, just in case. Well, so Wolverine, while Wolverine and Gambit are talking about stuff, like, you know, how Gam Gambit's, like, wondering, how the hell did you manage to find me? And Sabretooth managed to find them as well, and he kills John, and it's a shame because John was actually someone I liked. I actually really liked John a lot. I think because how he was in this movie and probably how he's portrayed in the video game as well. So the, him just dying right there is just disappointing, and they killed him to get Weapon 11's power so he can teleport. So pretty much, Gambit and Wolverine start fighting, and then Sabretooth is there as well. So all three of them start fighting. So pretty much, Wolverine knocks out Gambit, and then he's like, he, Wolverine's like saying to Sabretooth, I'm gonna cut your goddamn head off. And then Gambit comes in again, and he's an asshole, and pretty much lets Sabretooth get away. Then they start fighting. And then, um, you know, when people have an apartment, they have that stair thing. I don't know how to pronounce it, but pretty much Gambit gets on there, and then Wolverine like cuts it down, and that's the, cartoon, the cartoonish way you can imagine. And pretty much... Gambit, Wolverine interrogates Gambit, and Gambit offers to help Wolverine, because, you know, Wolverine wants to, like, kill everyone there and save the mutants, so Gambit agrees, so they end up going to Stryker's Island, and uh, they end up finding a lot of stuff, well, mainly Wolverine, because Gambit just stays on the plane until, like, maybe he comes back later, actually, no, he comes at, like, about, uh, pretty much around the end of the third act, so Gambit's in the film for, like, three minutes, uh, they did Gambit dirty in this movie, like, he's hardly in the movie, and they offered him a movie, but that got canceled. Man, poor Gambit. If the MCU do the X-Men, have Gambit in your roster, because, come on, we gotta see Gambit. Like, we're sick of him being done dirty. Wolverine's girlfriend's alive. We never saw that coming. Well, no, if you watched the movie at the first time, then you'd probably be shocked, but, you know, I didn't want to spoil it, because, you know, I wanted to do the same thing, like, in the movie. So it's revealed that she was working for Striker the whole time, and Sabretooth pretty much, not drugged her, but pretty much gave her something that knocked her out and put fake blood on her. Which is strange, because Wolverine's able to sense something, like, he's able to sense when something's fake or not. So, pretty much, Wolverine could not tell if that was fake blood, like, he couldn't smell it, like, because blood has a smell, like, blood has a weird smell, so it's like... Wolverine could have been able to tell that she was still breathing because, like, you know, slowing her, whatever she was given by Sabretooth, it slowed her heart down. And the thing earlier, it seemed like she had no idea what Sabretooth was going to do to her. So, like, what? Did he have this, did she do this without knowing or something? Like, it makes no sense. So, pretty much, Wolverine feels betrayed and Sabretooth is just watching in the distance and Wolverine just walks out there depressed. And the reason we find out why Kayla did this is because that, Stryker has her sister captive, and Sabretooth is doing all this because, you know, he would promise that he would be given the animantium, and he pretty much used the both of them, and Kayla sees this, and Sabretooth is about to kill Kayla because he's like, and he's like, maybe this time I'll kill you, then Wolverine hears her screaming, and then Wolverine's about to fight Sabretooth again, but somehow is missing up his button-up shirt he had earlier, like, I guess he just dished it to look more badass with the tank top, so he's pretty much about to give 
the final blow to Sabretooth, but his girlfriend's like saying, you're not a monster, Logan, don't kill him. And he doesn't, he just knocks him out. So pretty much Wolverine frees the other mutants along with Cyclops, and they all get out of there until they run into Weapon 11. Do I need to say anything about this design? Like, this is supposed to be Deadpool, and they call him Weapon 11, and just make an original character just use Wade Wilson's character. And this is where a lot of people found, saw the, found out the movie was trash, or just knew the movie was trash because what they did to Deadpool. They disrespected his character. And I think this is a time where Deadpool was starting to get very popular. Like, because this came out the same year as that anime movie of Wolverine fighting Hulk and Deadpool was in it. And a lot of people said the best thing about it was Deadpool. Even I agree. I'd be like, oh, the best thing about it was Deadpool. And, like, that's a time where Deadpool started to get very popular. And I think because of Marvel Ultimate Alliance, that's introduced him to, like, you know, modern audiences. Because no one knew who he was in the 90s and no one cared for him until, like, the early 2000s. So... The, for the Deadpool fans that happened at the time, and Deadpool fans now, this offends a lot of Deadpool fans because they sealed his mouth shut, and he's no longer the Merc with the mouth. He's the Merc with no mouth. And he's just Baraka pool. He has, like, these blades that look like Baraka, and it's like he's literally Baraka just without a mouth, and it's so-called Deadpool. So he pretty much has all the powers of all the mutants that were killed by Sabretooth and some that were kidnapped by Colonel Striker. And pretty much him and Sabretooth and Wolverine fight on top of whatever, Colonel Stryker's base, I guess. And pretty much, Wolverine ends up winning the Captain Baraka pool, and then, like, kicks him in, and then pretty much have his head, like, spin around, and then, like, you know, cause the place to blow up and stuff, and to be destroyed. And Wolverine's, like, telling his brother that this isn't over, and he's like, we, you need me, Jimmy. We're brothers. And I'm like, yeah, but you guys aren't gonna remember each other in the timeline, because the first movie, you guys seemed like you met each other the first time in the film. Oof. So, pretty much, Baraka Pool is dead, quote, dead. Ugh. What a way to go. Thank God for Days of Future Past for retconning this stuff so we can get the real Deadpool. Thankfully, the one thing I can say about this is that we had Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, but he got better in, like, of course, the Deadpool movie. Like, this was just a disgrace. So after Wolverine kills Weapon 11 and he lets Sabretooth go, seeing that they'll fight each other another day, well, then they won't remember each other then. And then Wolverine's about to get crushed when he's saving his girlfriend who got shot somehow or stabbed somehow earlier. So so pretty much they're about to get crushed, but then Gambit comes in and saves the day and he's like, did you miss me? And I'm like, yeah, where were you? Like, where are you? Were you trying to tell Fox to get your, yourself your own movie? Like, did you argue with them or something? I mean, whatever, you got a sick-ass boss fight in the Wolverine game, so I guess that's something, but that's all you're probably going to get for this franchise. So, pretty much, Wolverine tells Gamp to f see where the kids went, and he sees that Charles Xavier picked them up, and he's like, oh, that's good. Then he goes back to Wolverine, but pretty much before, while he was doing that, Colonel Strider comes in with animantium bullets and shoots Wolverine. Wolverine's about to, like, you know, come at him, and then he shoots Wolverine in the head, losing his memory, and shoots him two, two times in the head. And it's about to kill his girlfriend. But then, it's you know, she had powers as well. And she's about to pull the trigger, the striker. And she just says, forget it, walk till your feet bleed. So pretty much striker leaves and pretty much is going to walk till his feet bleed. And she dies there in the process. And it was handled much better in the video game because, you know, she, like, was able to still be alive. But then she just drowned herself, which is pretty depressing. So Gambit finds Wolverine, he wakes up, he has no memory, and Logan's like, what's my name and stuff, and he sees the necklace he had, and it's Logan and Wolverine, so that's how he's able to remember those names, but not his real name. And they look at his girlfriend's corpse, and Gambit's like, do you know her? And Wolverine's like, no. And Gambit's like, come on, we have to go, and Wolverine's like, I'll, I'll find somewhere else to go, I'll, I'll go by myself. So pretty much, wherever Wolverine's gonna go, we pretty much, you know... No, where he's, he well, we pretty much don't know where he's gonna go now because, like, you know, he's gonna be on his own. He's gonna be a lone wolf until the X Men movie, the first one, and yeah, pretty depressing ending. So let's talk about the after credit scene. So X Men Last Stand had an after credit scene with Charles Xavier still being alive, but in someone else's body. This after credit scene has Baraka Pool still be alive and pretty much, pretty much about to reach for his head and realize that the mouth part is gone. He can talk again, and he looks at the screen and goes shh. And it ends like it's some fucking horror movie. And it goes nowhere. So unlike the MCU when they do after credits, it like it sets up the next movie. For this, it just goes nowhere. Like this is never brought up ever again, the Wolverine or Days of Future Pass. And it doesn't matter. So you can wipe this from existence. So pretty much 
it doesn't matter. Like, I was confused when I saw this. I'm like, why is it ending like it's some horror movie? Like, it has, like, creepy, like, music about to re- when he's reaching for his head. And then the head wakes up and he's like, shh. And, yeah, it ends like it's a horror movie. I'm like, wow, why did that feel like that was an uh, ending to a horror movie? Like, were they going to go for a dark route? Like, what are they going to set up for this character? I'm so glad whatever happened was scrapped and they went for the real Deadpool, not this piece of crap. Thank God Deadpool went back in time and just shoot this guy a billion times. The fake Deadpool. The real Deadpool killed him. Thank God. And that was my review of X-Men Origins Wolverine. And it was meh. It wasn't as horrible as Last Stand, but it's far from great as the first two movies. So, yeah, I will say it's better than X-Men The Last Stand. But it's still a bad X-Men movie. So for my inclusion, I'm going to give X-Men Origins Wolverine a 4 out of 10. I was going to give it a 5, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give it a 4. So I gave it the same rating as Last Stand. Even though, like, while I gave these two, X-Men Last Stand and this movie the same rating, I will say this is a bit better than X-Men Last Stand. X-Men Last Stand, like, did not know what it wanted to do, and they just rushed it out. This kind of knew what it was doing, but it made a lot of dumb decisions. So yeah, X-Men Origins Wolverine is a 4 out of 10. I'll see you guys next time when I review X-Men First Class. A much better X-Men film, and hopefully it will redeem the X-Men film franchise, because Last Stand and Origins just blew it. Because the first two movies were great, and then the third one, and this one, just ruined it. Hey, it's me! Don't scratch!